Hi, my name is Rhys Locke and I'm presenting this video on behalf of Starbeck Educational Resources. Starbeck Educational Resources is the specialist school supplier of inexpensive, exciting and unusual history, art, religious and cultural artefacts. Whether you are an existing customer of Starbeck Educational Resources or are looking to buy from us for the first time, we hope that this video will allow you to get to know a little bit more about the contents of one of our Starboxes. In this case, the Great Fire of London Starbucks. Our Great Fire of London Starbucks comprises nine items. In this video, I will take you through each of these nine items. I will then finish by mentioning a few associated items, also available through Starbeck Educational Resources, which may complement your collection. Even if you are an existing customer of Starbeck who has already purchased one of our boxes and are looking for more resources on the Great Fire of London and its associated history, I note that each of these items can be viewed and purchased individually on our website. A reminder of all of this is in the description below. Okay, so I'd like to start today's video demonstration by showing you some examples of firefighting equipment from our Great Fire of London Starbucks. Here, I have a medium firefighter's helmet. Now, this realistic child-sized version of what would have been genuine leather helmets would have been worn at the time of the Great Fire of London. Now, as you can see at the back here, there is a large flap which would have protected the wearer's neck. And on the inside, there would have been padding, both for comfort, but also for protection. We know that leather is, of course, still used today because it is flame resistant and also resistant to breaking up. Now, something that's particularly interesting about these helmets is that they were not designated to a fire crew because there was no official fire crew at the time of the Great Fire of London. Now this changed a year later in 1667 with the inauguration of the Fire Office in London. But in Great Britain, it took until 1824 in Scotland for the first official organised municipal fire brigade to be founded. So until 1667, people would have been expected to go to the local parish churches in emergencies, and this would have been where the helmet would have been kept. Now, the helmet would have perhaps also had initials on of the parish for easier identification. And this idea of going to the local parish church leads me nicely on to the next item. And this, as you can see here, is a fire bucket. Now, again, this is leather and the kind of bucket that would have been used to fight fires in the 1600s and beyond. It has an inside layer of pitch, which is like a thick tar that would make it waterproof. However, these leather buckets had to be looked after carefully because they could actually quite easily break, despite being made of leather. So at the church, you would have found helmets, buckets, but you also would have likely found hooks and ladders and axes, which people were expected to use to fight fires in their area. Until, of course, when things changed slightly in 1667. But we can safely say that times have changed. OK, so you may ask yourself how fires were put out effectively just using the buckets, similar to those that I showed you a moment ago. Well, in fact, there was another system in place at the time of the Great Fire of London, which I can represent here via this section of wooden pipe. Now, this section of wooden pipe represents what would have been a system of elm pipes throughout the city of London. Now, these elm pipes would have supplied 30,000 houses via a high water tower at Cornhill. They would have been filled from the river when it was at a high tide. 
but also via a reservoir of Hertfordshire spring water in Islington. Now it was often possible to open a pipe near to a burning building and connect it to a hose to put out a fire or to fill buckets like the one that I demonstrated earlier. Now actually, in fact, lots of buckets were often filled at the same time to form a bucket brigade alongside the hoses. Now what this would mean is that double rows of people who were acting as firefighters would have lined the streets and would have passed buckets up and down, back and forth, full and empty from the river. Now earlier I touched on the fact that fire crews or fire brigades didn't exist until the year after the Great Fire of London. And this next item relates to that change. I have here an example of a fire mop. Now this is something that would have been bought in, in the late 1600s as proof that individual buildings had insurance against fire. There were different insurance companies offering coverage and each company would have had their own fire mark. Now the post-1666 fire crews would have more likely been inclined to put out fires in a building which had insurance rather than one that didn't. Now, so far in this video on the Great Fire of London, you might say that I've talked all work and no play. But I'm about to change that with this next item. Because what I have here is a pewter tankard. Now, this one reflects the traditional design of pewter tankards around the time of the Great Fire. And these tankards would have been found in homes, in hostelries, which we now know as pubs, but also likely in the hands of firefighters who needed a drink to quench their thirst from their very hard work, of course. Talking about all of this as if it is matter of fact, well, what we have to thank for that is people's accounts of what happened during the Great Fire of London, during the 17th century, in fact. Now, this item is rather significant in that respect, because what I have here is a quill pen, a quill pen similar to the one likely used by Samuel Pepys. Samuel Pepys's diary is one of the most famous and one of the very few sources which provides such in-depth detail about everyday life during the Great Fire of London, but also during the Great Plague. Now, this is a real feather quill with a biro end. And it's worth noting that there is a card inside which tells you how the quill would have been made, but also how it would have been used during the 17th century. Now, of course, the focus of today's video has been on the Great Fire of London, but in that last clip, I mentioned the Great Plague. Now, these, the Great Fire of London and the Great Plague, are two events of the 17th century. And a third would be the gunpowder plot. To encapsulate all of these historically significant events from the 17th century, we have this in our Great Fire of London Starbucks. That is the plot, plague, and fire freeze. Now, as I've just shown you then, these are three individual timelines, if you like visual representations, but also with corresponding text to give you historical background as to what happened throughout each of these events. Now, we know that chronology is something of great importance in history, and this next item can help you with that in regards to the Great Fire of London. What we have here is a Great Fire of London timeline kit. Now this is a simple double-sided laminated kit that forms a nice timeline to show the order of the event as part of the Great Fire of London. Okay, so we're down to the last item from our Great Fire of London Starbucks. And I saved this one till last, this Great Fire of London map. Now I think personally that it's a fantastic item to put on display 
and can serve as a nice segue into conversations about the Great Fire of London. Now this one here is a colorized A1 copy of Wenceslaus Holler's map, which can be found in the Museum of London. Now Holler was a German-born artist. He was also a draftsman and an etcher. And just five days after the Great Fire of London, the king ordered Wenceslaus Holler to do an accurate survey and plan of the city, which would then later be used by architects such as John Evelyn and Sir Christopher Wren, who were tasked with rebuilding the parts of the city that were damaged by the fire. Now that we've seen the contents of our Great Fire of London Starbucks, I'd like to finish this video by pointing you to three additional items of interest. I've already mentioned the Great Plague in today's video, and if you are interested in delving even further into the events of the Great Plague, then the Great Plague value box would go very well alongside the Great Fire of London Starbucks we've spoken about in today's video. If you like the child-sized helmet from earlier in the video, you may want one for yourself. And we do also have on offer a full-size firefighter's helmet, which can be purchased individually. Lastly, if you enjoy discussing history topics with younger children, maybe if you teach the lower age ranges in primary schools, then you may also be interested in this Great Fire of London book pack. Within this pack, we have selected 15 books, which include fiction and non-fiction, to enrich study on the Great Fire of London. So there we have it. We have seen the contents of our Great Fire of London Starbucks and some associated items. And I hope that this video demonstration has been useful in helping you to visualise what's inside this Starbucks. Now, if you have any questions at all about things relating to today's Starbucks or topic, please do not hesitate to get in touch. That's either via email at info at starbeck.education or via phone at 01530 836 111. We also highly recommend that you check out our website, www.starbeck.education, where you will find more information and be able to look at some of our other specialist products, including a further range of value boxes and star boxes on other historical topics, but also on religious and art topics. That leaves me just to say thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye for now.